Hello, in this video I'm going to review the Gordon Growth Model of Stock Valuation. The Gordon Growth Model uh, is the following. The current stock price equals a discounted value of an infinite stream of future dividends. Here's the formula for the Gordon Growth Model. I won't go through the derivation, but this is the formula. Uh, here are some assumptions. Dividends are assumed to grow at a constant rate, G. So G represents the growth rate of dividends, and that will be assumed constant, maybe 2%, 3%, 4%, something like that. The required return on the stock is K, and K has to exceed G in order for the denominator to be positive. D subscript 1 represents a dividend, but it is a dividend uh, received at the end of one year. So a few things about this formula. If the dividend increases, the current stock price will increase. The left-hand side will get bigger as D subscript 1 goes up. If G increases, the growth rate of the dividends, if that increases, the denominator gets smaller and the current stock price will increase. If K decreases, the required return on the stock, the, denom the denominator gets smaller and the current stock price increases. One way to think about this, people are willing to pay more for stock if they accept a smaller return. And if K increases, the denominator gets bigger, and the current stock price falls. And again, the way to think about this is people are willing to pay less for a stock if they require a higher return. And let's do some problems. If the required return is 10%, the growth rate of dividends is constant at 3%, and the year-end dividend is $2.55, what is the current stock price? So using the formula, the dividend here is $2.55. The required return is 10%, but we're going to put that in as a decimal. And the growth rate in dividends is 3%, and that also goes in the formula as a decimal. Doing the math here, the current stock price is $36.43. Another example, a stock is selling for $90, for $90 that has a required return of 12% and the dividend growth rate of 4%. What is the size of the dividend received at the end of one year? So here's our formula, plugging in what we know. The current stock price is $90. We don't know what the dividend is, we're going to solve for that, but we know that the required return is 12% and the growth rate in the dividend is 4%. So simplifying the denominator, we get 0.08. Multiplying everything through by 0 0.08, uh, the dividend is $7.20. Example 3, a stock is currently selling for $100 and will issue a $4 dividend at the end of the year. The dividend payments are expected to grow at a constant rate of 5%. What is the stock's required return? Plugging in what we know, $100 for the price, $4 for the dividend. We're trying to solve for K, the required rate of return, and we know that the growth rate in the dividends is equal to 5%. Multiplying through by K minus 0.05, we get this result. Simplifying the left-hand side, 100 times 0 0.05 is just 5, and we have this result here. Adding 5 to both sides, and then dividing through by 100, the required return is 9%. And in our last example, a stock is currently selling for $100 and will issue a $2 dividend at the end of the year. The required return on the stock is 9%. What is the growth rate of the dividend? So the price is $100. The dividend is $2. The required return is 9% or, 9 or 0 0.09. And we're trying to solve for G, the unknown. So once again, uh, we're just going to multiply through by what's in the denominator here. 
So on the left-hand side, we have the following. 100 times 0.09 is 9. 100 times g uh, is going to be 100g. We've got the minus in front, though. And then moving some things around, we're going to get 100g equals 7. And the growth rate in the dividend is expected to be 7% per year. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.